Today was a whirlwind morning. I went to the chiropractor. And I have to tell you about my chiropractor. You can get your neck cracked and your hair did all at the same time. Donna needs to go to see Dr. William Hadley because she fell down outside of Richards last week. Oh, man. I'm so upset. She's just a mess. Oh, I'm hurting. She's just a mess. I am so jacked up. I can't stand it. Dr. Hadley this morning. All right, that's enough. We got the point. Dr. Hadley challenged me if I would do this, so I did it. So I hope you're watching, Dr. Hadley. But what this video is really about is making these really cute little beady, charming things that I just totally love. And um, they're so simple. Anybody can do them. And it's going to be a short video today. And you just have to excuse me. We're just a little whacked here sometimes, but that's why you love us, right? Anyway. Yay, Dr. Hadley. He's the best chiropractor. He's in Bessemer, Pennsylvania. If you're messed up, go see Dr. Hadley. Okay, come on over here. I'm going to show you my beady charmies. So, what we're going to talk about today are these cute little beady charmies. i got to lay that down and get my finger out of the way so you can see. It's just a spiraled eye pin. That's all as it is. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Very, very, very basic beginning wire wrap. That's what I'm good at. Anything that's beginner, that's my thing. You advanced people, I know you can do this. I know you can do it way better than me. I know that my technique probably stinks. But hey, it gets the job done and that's what it's about. Don't anybody ever make you feel like what you did wasn't good enough because today there's no right, no wrong. My work proves that. <laughs> I sell it. People love it. So... It's okay. Here's one that's just made from wire. I like this. Bead Smith Craft Wire. I use 20 gauge silver non tarnish. We carry this at the site and it's just like butter to work with. So you can use these nice long head pin, eye pins, three inch eye pins in the brass ox. This matches our line, our brass ox line perfectly. It goes with chocolate ox and rusty pretty good too. Um, so you can use these, as I've used here, or you can use lengths of this craft wire. And we have it in a bunch of colors, but I like the silver. And as you can see, I made a little mark on here that I roughly cut it that length. That's about how long I need to make one like that. Okay, guys? So we're just going to kind of roll through this. And like I say, if you're advanced... Um, that's okay. This is a good project for people and good for beginners. And then I'm going to show you what I do with them and how much these little things add to your work. So I like to sit for a whole afternoon and make a pile of them and then I have them. And I like to use these spectra beads. <clears throat> They're actually glass and they have this frosty finish. I don't know, Rob, if you can get up on that. It almost reminds me of 50's Weeping Gold. These are really, really cool. We're going to have them on the site soon. I never did. I just used them for myself, but they're so fabulous. I've been selling them here in the shop, so um, you deserve to have a shot at them, too. So I will have some very soon, but for now, I do have the wire. I do have the eye pins, and the tools that you need are nice round nose. These have a cutters in them, but I don't use that. Uh, flat nose, good flat nose pliers. These are ultra ergo. I think these are Euro tool. If I can remember right. Um, anyway, these are wonderful. You've got to have a good pair of flat nose, good pair of cutters. If you can afford Tronex or Lindstrom, well, salute. I'm happy for you. Um, personally, I use these Zeron from our website. I think they're $18. And they're about the best, cheaper, low end cutters that you can get that I've found so far. And one day, I aspire to have a full set of Lindstroms. If you have one already, like I say, I'm happy for you. Uh, those are the best. And um, Tronex is good too. Also, little pad with a bench block, steel bench block, and hammer. Because you might want to bang the end of this to flatten it. And I'll show you. Okay, let's do one. Get my sleeves out of my way. Let's go for it. Okay, let's start <clears throat> with a brass ox one. This is what it's going to look like, hopefully, when I get done, before I thread the beads on like that. And as you see, I have the first loop already made. See? So I'm going to take 
my flat nose. And you have to excuse if you see any glue on these, because you know I'm, I'm big into glue. But anyway, they work. So I'm just going to take this on the end, and I'm just going to start turning it. I hope my hands don't shake too much. I cut my finger this morning, too, on top of everything else. Um, just start coaxing it. Can you see that? I hope Robbie can get that because I'm in there. Just start coaxing it like you're making a spiral. If you've done beginning wire work, you know how to do this already. It's no big deal. I'm going to just stop there and just do two coils, okay? This one's, I think, three. Okay, now, right here is where I want to stop. And I'm going to do what they call, I think, break the neck of the pin. And then I need my round nose for that. So right, I have to like a right angle. I'm going to take this and I'm going to stand it up. And you can use, in fact, I might take my flat nose. And, no, I'm not. I don't do it that way. You could if you want. And I'm going to stand this upright. Okay? And then to fix it and form it a little bit, once I do stand it upright, I might grab it here and just pull it up and tighten it a little bit more. Okay. So now I have that. Okay, now I was saying about flattening. <clears throat> if you want to flatten, you just simply, probably the stuff's going to go flying now when I'm doing this. Put it on, you've got to have metal to metal on your steel bench block and just tap it a little bit. That work hardens it and it flattens it. It makes it kind of cool. See? But you don't want to go way up the shaft beating it down because if you get to the place where we're going to be twisting it you could work hard and it'll snap off so just stay on your spiral okay all right back to the job okay very simple I am going to take one of my little spectra beads I like this lavender one so I'm going to put it on there and then I'm going to take one of these pretty little caps. We have over, I think, 70 different types of caps at Bisu Boutiques. So there I did that. And I think I'll put <clears throat> this bright pink with it, coral pink. Okay, so there I go. And you could keep going. You could put more or you could put another cap on top. But I'm going to stop there so I can show you how I wrap the top. Okay, so again, we're going to break the neck of the eye pin. You want to keep this facing that way so when you make your eye loop it's going the same way as this. So I've got a pretty good right angle there. Okay, now you get <clears throat> your round nose under there and just pull it up with your finger up over the top loop and pull it down across. See? This is one of the simple <clears throat> techniques that you see in all the magazines. Every time you get one, shows you how to do a wrap coil. But you know, it took me, I know it must be a little challenge. It took me a while to get this to where I like it. Some people make them meticulously. Now I'm going to start pulling that around. I hope you can see that. You could actually just do it with your fingers. And again, no right, no wrong. You can wrap it as many times or not that you want. I think I'm done here. This one started to wrap down around the bead. That's okay. Some like to keep it up on the stem. That's okay. You play with it. I'm the idea girl. You do what you want. And you fiddle with it till you get it right. I'm on camera here. We can only expect just so much. I am not perfect. I embrace imperfection. I like mine a little wonky. If you want yours meticulous, then you take an afternoon and you get it right. But you do what you do definitely want to do is tuck your little tail in as best you can with your flat nose. You don't want anything sticking out after you clip that off because it could catch on people's clothes or scratch them or whatever. And it just looks neater. That is imperative. You've got to do that. And try not to chip your bead either, which I believe I did a little bit. Normally I don't, but on camera, and I've had such a day today. But we haven't made a video for a while, and I wanted to share this with you. Okay, so we did it with that. Now we're going to do it with a piece of this other wire. <clears throat> now, as you can see, I don't have my loop here, so I'm going to have to make it. So I'm going to start about here. Bend it back to right angle, get it on the end with the round nose pliers, and I'm going to try to make 
the bestest eye that I can make. The bestest. I think I'm at the place where I would use my flat. All right, that's not bad. It's probably not my bestest, but I tried. Okay, now I'm going to grab it with the flat. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just start coaxing it. Now, at first, this wire is probably not going to want to go in as tight as the brass aux wire. It's a little heavier, so you could go with a 22 gauge if you'd rather. I like 20, but it's going to be fine. You just play with it till you like it. You know, I do, I'm just starting you on this journey. The rest is up to you. I can't hold your hand the whole way. Maybe you got something to share with me sometime. That's great. But I will certainly start you. And here I go. I've got it. Can you see that? My shaky hands? All right. So now I want to do something sort of kind of like that. This has three beads. So... <clears throat> Hopefully I have the right colors, but if I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm going to thread three on here, maybe a grayish blue, and then I had a little one at the top, so I'll just do this teal one. Good enough. Okay. Again, we're going to break the neck up here. It's going the same way as our coil, this way. Okay. Then pull it back up over. Watch that that long tail that you don't gouge yourself or anybody else. Pretty nice. Grab hold of it and wrap. This stuff is like butter. You can wrap it with your fingers very handily. Now I'm going to go this way and in the crack and then when I get up over here in the crack and the crack over one again this way and go around and go around. Oops, I'm bending it too much. Too much tension. Okay. Do I want to go again? Yeah, maybe one more time. Okay, now I'm going to clip right here. And I always clip down. You can see my messy floor. I don't care. Because you don't want that to go flying in somebody's eye or your eye. Safety glasses or glasses are a good idea. I hate them, but they are a good idea. Sometimes, like they say, necessary evil. Now I'm going to tuck my wire. All right. Not bad. And then you can always straighten anything up, you know, when you're done. And there, you've got a nice dangling. Now, if you can do two exactly the same, you'd have a wonderful pair of earrings. But you want your wire all to be going, you know, in the same direction. But I guess it really wouldn't have to. You know, it's up to you. You can bind them and go back and forth. Over. I've done that, too. But anyway, just to show you real quick what I like to use them on. This is a charm bracelet that I made earlier this week and showed it on Facebook. So if you... <clears throat> excuse me, stay in touch with me at Facebook, you've probably seen it already. It's got the engraved heart charms. That Remember my um, video I did the other day, or a couple weeks ago, I should say, where I engraved on the hearts? Well, these are some of them finished. I did the vintage patinas around the edges, then distressed it. I did it on the bead and link chain, which many have been drooling over, and yes, we are out, but I have it on order. Some have been buying it by the spool. This is so special. It's my favorite chain. It is brass. This one's our brass ox one. And yeah, I do have a little bit here. This is my stash. Mine. Mine. We'll get some more soon. <laughs> this is just about the right month for a charm bracelet if you're making one. But what I did is I just uh, applied the vintage patina over this and then I let it, I, I heat set it and then I distressed it and then I set it with a uh, clear coat, sealed it. But that's another video, but I'm just telling you how. But you'll see, I use my little beadies and charmies on here. Now, these are the caged pearls from our website that are already done. But you could do that if you have pearls. Why not? My little beadies and charmies. Some of them have the spiral ends. Some of them don't. Some of them done with head pins. But they just add that little pop of color. The same way with this piece. This is a convertible necklace. What it is, is it's, it's a charm bracelet that you can take the back off.
and now it's just a charm bracelet. Very good idea. It, it's a selling point when you make charm bracelets to make them convertible like that. You can wear it as a necklace or as a bracelet. And it's got an engraved charm, but see, it's got spirals on it. And the beady charms. So basically, glass spectra beads, three inch brass ox eye pins, pieces of 20 gauge silver non tarnished wire or other kind. We have rose gold, we have antique gold, we have vintage bronze, we have all kinds of antique copper of this wire. I love this wire, it's like butter to work with. And some random bead caps. This is all stuff from our website, bisuboutiques.com. And again, the tools you will want to use round nose, flat. You gotta have these. These are just, you gotta have them for doing spirals. A decent pair of cutters. And then if you want to flatten your hammer and your bench block. So, I'm going to leave you alone now and set you off to go to your, to, to your uh, what is it called? Workshop. <laughs> go to your workshop, have some fun, make some, and one-up me and do it better. Because that's what I expect of you. Do it better. I, I set you on a path. Let's see where you go with it. And just have a ball.